You are listening to Model Mentality. Welcome to Let's Get Clinical by Dr. Ali. In this segment, I explore connecting the dots between our guests' personal stories and the larger mental health context. You're listening to our interview with Mia Kang. Let's review Mia's story. Mia Kang is a fashion model who is half South Korean, half British, and born in Hong Kong, and is a strong advocate for diversity and body positivity, which is no surprise given her background. Mia has struggled with eating disorder symptoms for years and never received formal treatment. From an early age, she would eat her way through her emotions and was overweight. She describes being bullied and suddenly dropping her weight in her teenage years in the face of potential health issues. She was then scouted to model in her early teens and embarked on a successful career. And at its height at age 27, when she was asked to lose weight quickly for a shoot, she paused and realized how miserable she was despite the external appearance of her life. And since then, through an evolving journey and her discovery of the martial art Muay Thai, she regained balance over her mind, body, and behaviors around eating. However, more recently, given her suspected COVID-19 case, the confines of the quarantine and the inability to engage in her coping mechanisms as usual, a main one being Muay Thai, has made her feel more vulnerable to her pre-existing eating disorder. Three things stand out to me from a clinical perspective. First, her struggle with symptoms of various eating disorders. Second, her suspected COVID-19 case. And third, quarantine as a trigger for her pre-existing mental health condition. So for the first, what about the symptoms of her eating disorder? Mia has struggled with erratic eating habits and symptoms of eating disorders, from restriction to weight fluctuations to binges to laxative abuse and an intense emotional experience alongside this of being all consumed by the thoughts around eating and intense feelings of guilt and self-loathing. Although she was never officially diagnosed by a health professional, and please note that my interview with her is not a diagnostic one, her struggle is consistent with what many people face in our society with anorexia, binge eating, bulimia, and other eating disorders. The difficulty is that although she had a cousin pass away from health consequences of severe bulimia, her struggles were not acknowledged nor recognized as an issue in her family because she looked normal from the outside. So let's stop right there. Does that sound familiar to some of you? I hear this a lot in clinical practice, that people may go to loved ones or trusted ones with their struggles and often come back feeling invalidated or not heard. What's the takeaway here? Since your mental health struggles are often an internal process which can be hidden, if you are in need of help, consult a healthcare provider to help guide you with what you are experiencing. Because mental health conditions have historically been stigmatized, your immediate support system around you may or may not understand or may not be sensitized to your needs. And that's why we do what we do. One other thing to call out here, Mia notes that at 27 years of age, when she was at the height of her career, she felt miserable. From the outside, everything appeared perfect, but internally she was in need of help. There is often this dissonance that life may appear perfect from the outside to the observer or on social media, or, on, or from highly perfected visual images across the media. Those perfect images do not imply internal perfection. And what is that anyway? And it does not imply a lack of human struggles. We are all human. We all struggle. Second, what about Mia's suspected case of COVID-19? Mia, like many others around the world, had symptoms that are consistent with COVID-19 disease. COVID-19 incidentally stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019 and refers to the pneumonia that develops from being infected with the novel coronavirus known to scientists as SARS-CoV-2. She was hospitalized with a suspected case of COVID-19 after collapsing in Thailand from respiratory symptoms. Although she never received her test results for COVID-19 due to the laboratories being inundated, after the administration of both antibacterial and antiviral medications, and a few days in the hospital, Mia returned home to heal and was in quarantine at the time of our interview on March 22nd, 2020. She was beginning to recover at the time we spoke to her and was starting to get her energy back. Third, how could quarantine affect one's pre-existing mental health condition? In Mia's case, she notes that as she started to feel physically better, her eating disorder started to interfere with her thoughts. 
because her usual coping mechanism of Muay Thai requires physical contact, and this was not possible at the time of her COVID quarantine, she, like many others, was getting triggered and needed to quickly adapt and find new ways to cope in the face of her routine being disrupted. What I've seen as a psychiatrist is that everyone is having a different reaction to sheltering in place. Some people with pre-existing mental health conditions have felt worse during the last months. Others have felt better. The takeaway is that those who are in treatment are able to get support if their symptoms worsen. I would encourage all of you who are in a similar situation as Mia to find new routines to cope, be it yoga, exercise videos, meditation, journaling, leaning excessively on close friends and family through virtual or distance gatherings. And if your symptoms are still overwhelming, please seek out help from a behavioral health provider in your local area or by telehealth. I have utter respect for Mia to take the time to open up with us about her mental health journey and how she continues to feel in the face of new routines and uncertainty that we all face because these struggles are universal and global. She is human and struggles with the same things that many people face with regard to their bodies. And if you follow her on social media, you will see that she has come to a place of acceptance with respect to her body. Many people struggle with eating disorders, both within and outside of the modeling profession. And we want you to understand that you are not alone, that there is power in speaking up and in asking for and receiving help. Thanks for listening to Let's Get Clinical by Dr. Ali. Please check our show notes for references and more information on this episode. As always, if you are in crisis or you think you may have an emergency, call your doctor or 911 immediately. If you're having suicidal thoughts, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255 to talk to a skilled, trained counselor at a crisis center in your area at any time. If you are located outside of the United States, call your local emergency line immediately. What you have heard on Model Mentality does not represent what would take place during a psychiatric assessment or an actual therapy session. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Model Mentality. If you like today's content, please subscribe to Model Mentality or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, don't forget to rate and review us. Model Mentality is brought to you by Mind Studios.